Right now we're looking at the second uh, video on Laura's exam paper. Uh, we're now on the coast. Identify one erosional landform shown in the coastal landscape in figure one. So here's figure one. Rather distinctive uh, headland. We can name any of these really as a cliff. We've got the stack, we've got the stump, the wave cut platform. Any of those will do to answer that question. State one type of biological weathering that might have an impact on the landscape. Uh, she's put roots growing in the ground, cracking the rocks, that's fine. Could have talked about burrowing or acids in the soil. Explain one way riprap helps protect coastal landscapes. So, riprap, she's got as large man-made concrete boulders are placed along the coastline, that's true. The gaps in the rock allow some water to come through whilst absorbing most of the wave energy. Yep, that's fine. So they're taking the energy from the waves, that's the main point, the purpose of it, and so protecting the land behind. So she gets two marks there, which she's marked correctly. Now, on the longer answer questions, which are generally the, the problem and the thing that you're probably concerned about. In this question, as it shows in the mark scheme, you're marked four marks for each of AO3 and AO4. Now, AO3 is knowledge and understanding, so that's your ability to apply the things you know to the question, the things that you've learned in class. Here we've also got AO4 skills and techniques. This is your ability to use the resource. So if we have a look at it, you have to apply your understanding of how geography works to this resource here. So before you start, you should have a look at it. We've got a scale down there. You could use that. We've got the direction of uh, wind and the north arrow. So you can use those two in conjunction to say where the directions are. To make it a little easier to follow, I'm going to mark AO3 in blue and AO4 in green. Swash and therefore the direction of longshore drift is determined by the direction of the prevailing wind, that's correct. Driving waves at the beach in that direction, that's correct. Now, next to that, she's actually said it's coming from the southwest, and that's correct. So she's now applying her knowledge and understanding of the skills involved in studying the coast to this question. So she gets some credit on AO4. The swash and backwash zigzag, it's an important term, diagonally up and directly down the beach. So it's diagonally up, up at an angle, following the wind direction, but then straight down. For yourself, there's no point um, annotating the diagram, you wouldn't hand that in. Deposition starts to occur when coastline change direction. That's true. This forms a spit. Longshore drift is responsible for keeping the spit as sand and sediment constantly move from west to east. Now, constantly moving, that's once again AO3. She's shown a knowledge and understanding of how spits form and how they are maintained. Because she said west to east, well now she's talking about how to use the diagram. So, she's interpreting the resource as well. When it's past the headland, finer sediments such as sand are depositing in the creation of a salt marsh. As there is little disturbance of water, as it is sheltered by the curved spit. Okay. Now, there's an opportunity there where she could have made it maybe a bit clearer that it's being sheltered by the, the spit in this diagram, rather than simply that is what generally happens. There's a sense to which you might get AO4 marks here, but it's implied, and you should aim towards making it really explicit. Over time, the spit can develop a slight hook due to tides and winds, like shown in the diagram. Just try to point that out a bit more. Um, mentioning that hooks occur is showing a knowledge and understanding. This bends into the river. I have no idea what that says, so I cannot credit it. Now, we look at the great descriptors. Does she apply understanding and deconstruct information and provide logical connections between concepts throughout a balanced, well-developed argument, synthesizes relevant understanding, coherent, leading to judgments that supported 
by evidence throughout. She's supposed to be examining how the physical processes work together. Well, she has talked about different wind patterns up here. Um, she's interacted that with how the shape of the coast changes. And then she's talked about how the movement of the uh, longshore current keeps the spit going. And then she's talked about why the hook develops due to the tides. So she's got the, definitely got the interaction of different forces that are developing this spit. Does she use geographical skill to obtain accurate information that supports all aspects of the argument? Well, I had a little bit of an issue here where I wasn't sure if she's just talking generically about spits and salt marshes, but generally she is using the diagram to support her arguments. I'm going to go for giving her a 7. I'd rate for that. I think she was a bit more explicit in her use of the diagram when she was talking about the formation of the salt marsh near the river mouth. I'd have been tempted to give her the, uh, the full marks and give her 8. Also the opportunity here, just to look at the information available, she could have talked about scale, given some distance, just to demonstrate to the examiner, in this case me, that she was using the resource.